Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Coster's professor of English coming to you in a swimsuit because today we're going to be anti-establishment, anti-conformist, anti-mainstream, anti-authority and do things our way. Yeah, we're going to be rebellious and talk about John Updike's short story A&P. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about classic literature and writing because why not get free analyses of the texts that have impacted the world? The gist of the story is a 19-year-old guy named Sammy works in an A&P, a local grocery store. He's bored, uninspired by, and disappointed in the job and the clientele. The people who shop there are uninteresting, mechanical, conventional, and all the same. Sheep, as he calls them. And suddenly, in the midst of this monotony, three teenage girls walk into the A&P in nothing but swimsuits. They're not even wearing shoes. There's something refreshing, stimulating, and exciting about this to Sammy. The monotony and boredom are broken by their presence, but the puritanical adherence to rules, regulations, propriety, and convention is in full force when the manager, Langle, chastises and shames the girls for walking into a store in such improper attire. In response, Sammy impulsively quits his job and acknowledges how hard the world will be to him hereafter. This story was written in 1961, so the scandalous things that happen, like teenage girls walking into a store in swimsuits, are not as shocking these days, but the circumstances are not the point of the story. What's important is the protagonist Sammy's decision to stand against the norm for what he believes is the best way to live, and this is something that I think is still very much relevant to young people today. As I said, Sammy is only 19, so he's a young adult on the cusp of independence. This is a transitory age when the decisions he makes will determine who he will be and how he will define his life and himself. In many ways, though, Sammy's future is predetermined by the norms and expectations of a conservative society. He works at the local A&P because his parents are friends with the manager, Langle. And the fact that everyone in town is essentially part of a herd indicates that Sammy is directly on the path to join it. I mean, he works at the A&P, a store that's right in the middle of town where the best values can be found. Obviously, the best values in town means more than getting 10 cents off your coffee. Everyone goes to the A&P because they all need groceries, and it's here that Sammy watches an entire community of people partake in the mindlessness, propriety, consumerism, convention, the cookie-cutter customs, and dictates of suburban life. As Sammy says, these are people who live near the beach but haven't seen it in 20 years, who have fallen in line, don't question, don't care enough to question, and are aimlessly consumed with their alphabetized shopping list. These people are cash register watchers, a witch about 50 with rouge on her cheekbones and no eyebrows, women with six children in varicose veins on their legs who couldn't care less. They're people whose heads are so far buried in the sand that, as Sammy says, you could set off dynamite in an A&P and the people would just keep reaching and checking oatmeal off their list. And Updike shows us exactly how people become this. It's no accident that Sammy's co-worker Stokesy, a married 22-year-old father of two who aims to become manager of the A&P one day, is working on this same day. He's a reminder of what Sammy is expected to be in a couple of years. And the man Stokesy hopes to become one day is also working, Langle, the store manager, a no-nonsense authority figure who tells the girls their indecency is against store policy. So everything is routine, right down to the tune Stammy has made up, to the buttons he pushes on the cash register, to the people he works with and serves. Ever found yourself in a situation like this? Ever feel like you just want more in life or something different, but the world judges you for it? It's certainly not a feeling exclusive to Sammy or the time in which he lives. So this is why the appearance of these three girls is so significant to him. They represent an ideal, an aesthetic for him. I think we really miss the point of the story if we spend our time questioning whether Sammy's decision to quit was a smart or poor choice, or if we interpret his decision to quit as an act of defiance on the girl's behalf or as an act to impress them. Arguably, the girls are important only in that their presence in the store helps Sammy impulsively reject the path set out for him by his parents and society. It's clear from the get-go that he's been bored, disappointed, and uninspired by where he's at, whom he's around, and the path that he's on, but he's just never had the inspiration to get out. And you have to wonder if he ever would have separated himself from the herd had these three girls not walked into the A&P that day and been chastised by Langle. So it's not the three girls themselves that he's standing up for. He's standing up for what they represent. 
Even though Sammy doesn't know them, he projects onto the main girl, whom he's named Queenie, a lifestyle that he admires, saying, I slid right down her voice into her living room. He imagines her parents wearing fancy clothes and enjoying dainty snacks and slick drinks, which are, in his opinion, far superior to his family's commonplace lemonade in cups with cartoons stenciled on them. In Queenie, Sammy creates this version of life that is beautiful, different, and ideal, something that is non-existent in the people who frequent the store. And as Sammy revels in this new aesthetic and the meaning of it to him, Langle sweeps in, condemns it, shames it, rejects it, and says that it can't exist in this store that represents the town, and then he literally turns his back on it. Langle tells the girls, and thus Sammy's ideal, that they are indecent and that they must cover up because it's policy. Now keep in mind, it's a Thursday afternoon in the middle of summer, and the store is virtually empty. The girls are really hurting no one. But Langle, the Sunday school teacher, the manager of the ANP, and the friend of Sammy's parents is the puritanical and authoritative symbol of the establishment, and it's his job to enforce policy, judge the girls for their improper choices, and make it clear that such rebellious ways shall not be tolerated under the fluorescent lights of the ANP. Now, it's important to recognize that these young girls who are being spoken to by an older, authoritative male figure in the 1960s do not apologize or concede to Lingle's charge that they're indecent. In fact, Queenie defends them, arguing that they are decent, and they just came in to grab something for her mom. So this raises a number of questions like, should girls or women have the right to dress as they please without shame or accusations? But then again, is this question irrelevant since the girls are in a store that has written policies on this matter? Langle tells him that the A&P is not the beach, and he's right. Even though it's summertime and the beach is only a few miles from them, the girls are in the A&P, a literal new space and environment with different conventions, rules, and parameters. Even today, most stores still hang up signs that say, no shoes, no shirt, no service. These signs are indications that we still adhere to certain standards of decency and propriety in public spaces. So at what point should your individuality, behavior, and choices come at the expense of society's ideals and values? And as I've already indicated, I think Updike raises feminist concerns in this story. I mean, what are we to make of this older man criticizing and shaming these young girls for their appearance? Or how do you interpret the way Sammy, Stokesy, and McMahon speak of and look at the girls at times? Does Sammy himself objectify or project onto them? Is he sexualizing them or does he see in them more of an aesthetic? Would you even consider this story to be a feminist piece? This is an important text, especially since it was written in the early 1960s, a time that directly followed the conservative 1950s and when more liberal ideas were starting to be accepted and performed amongst the younger crowds. So it's asking these questions, and these questions are the same ones we ask today, only regarding different, newer circumstances. Certainly, the boundaries of propriety, freedom, individuality, and social mores are constantly being pushed and changed. I mean, I'm an English professor sitting before you in a swimsuit lecturing on literature. Is that off-putting to you? Strange? Indecent? Discomforting? I mean, I'm wearing it to make a point here. Approaching the climax of the story, Sammy says, now here comes the sad part of the story. At least my family says it's sad, but I don't think it's so sad myself. Clearly, his family disapproves of his decision to quit. But notably, even though Sammy made the decision in the moment, he's had time to think about it and endure the consequences of it. And yet he still doesn't think it's sad. He stands by his decision. And this just reaffirms that he quit his job out of principle and not to look cool in front of the three girls. His decision to quit is his first step toward independence. Remember that his parents, two more authoritative figures, got him this job through the relationship with Langle. This was not a choice that Sammy made himself. Rather, it was him fulfilling the status quo. Langle says, Sammy, you don't want to do this to your mom and dad, reminding him of this association. So this is a profound move on Sammy's part, and he knows it. Langle says, you'll feel this for the rest of your life. Now, of course, Langle is implying that Sammy has a good thing going on here. It's a stable, respectable job that his parents approve of. And one day he can probably become manager if he sticks with it. And it will support the family that he's expected to have in the coming years. And to throw all that away means compromising more than just one job. Now, at the end, Sammy seems to confirm Langle's statement, admitting, my stomach kind of fell as I felt how hard the world was going to be on me hereafter. 
But Sammy is saying the world isn't necessarily going to be hard because he fell out of line this one time. It's going to be hard because he's officially made the decision to challenge mainstream thought, conservative social values, the establishment, and voices of authority. And yeah, life is certainly going to be more challenging for him, but he's also going to live a more meaningful and authentic life. He won't be a member of the herd. So I would love to hear your thoughts on the story in the comment section below. How do you make your own choices? How do you know what you believe in? And how often are your decisions made by the status quo and what is expected of you? What will you become in life? I think we consider this question when it comes to our profession, business, or school, but we don't always ask it when we're thinking of our spirit and values. This is a major lesson we all must experience, so I imagine this story impacted you in an important way or another. Thank you for joining me to discuss ANP, and I hope to see you guys in the next lecture.